I've spent the last couple of days reworking my DWM config. DWM is Suckless's dynamic window manager, and I love DWM. It's It's got some quirks to it because you have to put in a lot of work to make it kind of usable because you have to patch the system to add what I consider basic functionality to DWM because there's some things missing that I really think should just be there by default in every window manager. One of the things that bothers me with DWM out of the box is the fact that it doesn't use key chords. So key chords are the ability to do two or more different key combinations to, to launch something. So instead of a traditional key binding where you do something like super shift enter all at the same time to do an action, a key chord is something like what Emacs does where you do control C and then you release that and do control X, for example, to close Emacs or control C and then release it and then control S to save, you know, things like that. That's a key chord. And the reason key chords are interesting is because then you really have unlimited possibilities for your key bindings because you'll never run out. You can always invent a key chord where if you're using traditional key bindings that especially have to use a mod key, which is usually either super or alt, you're going to run out of possible key bindings. There's only so many keys on the keyboard, right? So in the last week, I've really spent a lot of time redoing all of my tiling window manager configs for Xmonad, Qtile, the awesome window manager. In the last couple of days, I've spent all of my time really on uh, DWM here. Let me show you my DWM config. So uh, this, of course, is Emacs, and this is DearEd, the uh, file manager here inside Emacs. And this is is the source code for what will eventually be DTOS-DWM. That package is already packaged up. It's in the DTOS core repo, so you could actually install the package DTOS-DWM right now. Now, this still is a very much a work in progress. There's still functionality I want to add to this thing. I mainly already added the package to the repo just to have the package build done, but I know the window manager itself still it has got some quirks to it. You can see I've patched it quite a bit. I've added these patches here. So I've added the alpha patch for transparency, uh, attach bottom, auto start. Auto start allows you to put an auto start shell file in your home directory and a hidden folder you need to create .dwm, a hidden folder in your home directory. Put a auto start file in that auto start .sh and then you can get programs that auto start when you log into DWM. For example, you want your session manager and you know your network manager applets and things like, you know, whatever it happens to be that you want to launch on auto start. You've got the cycles layouts patch that just allows me to cycle through the various layouts that I've added. Then one of the extra layouts I added was grid mode, and that's the key chord patch there. That's very important. I'm going to talk about in just a second. Restart SIG. That allows me to have a key binding that restarts DWM because by default, DWM doesn't actually allow you to restart it, like a, do a hot restart, like you edit the config and recompile. What you would have to do without a patch like this is you would actually have to kill DWM and then log back into it. And that, that makes no sense, right? That's just really basic functionality you expect to have in a window manager. So I definitely needed that patch. The rotate stack patch is one that I have to have. I don't understand why this is a part of mainline DWM. Rotate stack means now that I've got some windows open with a super shift J or super shift K is what I've minded these two, I can actually rotate the window that has focus through the stack. Super Shift J goes one direction, Super Shift K will go the opposite direction. And to me, that just makes a lot of sense. I don't know, why. That, that's functionality that literally is in every tiling window manager that I know of out of the box, except DWM. And then status padding, this uh, allows me to have some padding in the panel and the status bar here. Because without that, the height of the panel and everything is just determined by the size of the font. But you know, I, I want some extra padding because without that extra padding, this bar here is really tiny and kind of scrunched up together. And then, of course, I added useless gaps, which allows us to have gaps between our windows, which I know is important for a lot of people. Uh, for aesthetics, you know, it looks nice. Now, functionality wise, does it really serve a purpose? Probably not. I think gaps probably are just wasted space, but for some people, I don't know, it, I, I guess it can make the windows, the fact that they're separated a little bit, make them stand apart a little bit. But to be honest, for me personally, gaps, I could take them or leave them. 
So let's get into the actual config file, which of course is the config.def.h. So let me open this and let's zoom in a bit. And the first thing I notice, again, this is very much a work in progress. Uh, just looking at this, this URL is no longer correct because now instead of dwt1 dwm-distro tube, this is going to be in a new repository of mine at gitlab.com slash dtos and the source code is going to be in slash etsy and then dtos dash dwm for those of you familiar with dwm there's nothing too crazy about most of the settings at the top this is just standard stuff where we set the border pixel width that's the uh, border of your windows so this red border for around the window that has focus is two pixels wide you could make that bigger or smaller whatever you feel like and of course the gaps were six pixels so pretty small gaps i might actually increase that a little bit i know people really like their gaps and by default i kind of kept the gaps kind of small and some other settings here a show bar obviously means do you want a panel or not if you set that to zero the bar will not show but you can always toggle the bar to show and hide here in dwm i think the default key binding is super b which i use super b to launch the browser in all of my uh, window managers so i wanted for consistency to keep super b to actually launch cute browser which is the default browser in dtos so i changed super b to toggle the bar to super shift b now toggles the bar show hide super shift b super shift b and then where do you want the bar most people using tiling window managers have the bar at the top so it's one for top zero if you want the bar at the bottom then we have horizontal pad bar, vert pad bar. So this is the padding in the bar. So horizontal padding, obviously, the amount of space between the items in the panel. Vert padding means the amount of padding above and below the items, which is important. If I move to a different workspace, you can see I've got eight pixels of vert padding. So really makes the bar a little taller to where it's a little easier for me anyway to read some of this stuff because without the uh, padding patch, the status padding patch, this bar again is really tiny as far as the height because it doesn't add any padding at all to the fonts and everything just kind of looks bunched up together. So I'm glad I added that patch. Some of the other stuff here, of course, I've got the fonts. I included three fonts. By default, it's going to look for the Ubuntu font. All these fonts, by the way, are installed out of the box anyway with DTOS. It's part, when you run through the installation, it installs Ubuntu, Hack, and Joy Pixels. So at first, it's going to look for the Ubuntu font. If for some reason the Ubuntu font can't render or it's not on your system, it'll look for the Hack font. And then if that's not there, it'll look for Joy Pixels. Now, Joy Pixels is important because it actually gives me these emojis here in the uh, DWM blocks status over here. So the way this works is Ubuntu and Hack can't handle some of these fonts. And if it can't handle that, you know, it'll go to Joy Pixels, which pretty much can handle a lot of those uh, weird glyphs. Then I set some values for these colors to be used later. Of course, these colors are the background and the foreground color, as well as this highlight color here in the status bar. So essentially, we're setting some variables to be used right here. You know, we're using a lot of those colors down here again for the bar and then of course we set up our workspaces or they're called tags here in DWM they're also called tags in awesome window manager because awesome is a fork of DWM and I use the same nine workspaces or nine tags and all of the window managers I name them all the same again for consistency that way when you log in to Xmonad and DTOS or DWM and DTOS or Qtile whatever it happens to be you get the same workspaces with the same locations so dev is always super one you know www is always super two and super three would be sys yada 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 then we get some window rules i haven't played with this at all this is just part of the default source code for dwm but it just gives you some examples of some window rules you can set i may play with that at a later date but right now what i was really focusing on was getting dwm patched and then getting the key bindings straight and when i get down to the key bindings you're going to notice my key bindings look a lot different <laughs> than what most people's dwm key bindings look like and that is because i patched it for that key cord patch so you'll notice i've got a extra set of braces in my key bindings as well as a numeral at the very beginning before actually doing the key binding and then the command it runs so the way this works is if you have one 
This is not a key chord. This is just a standard key binding. So for standard key bindings, you have to have one comma and then your standard key binding wrapped in two pairs of braces. And then after that, the command it runs, in this case, spawn, and then the command for DWM, which is a variable D menu CMD, which I have defined up here. Now, the way the key chords work is instead of a one, you add two and then you have two pairs of key bindings essentially wrapped again in double pairs of braces. So my DM scripts, I kept all of these bindings the same way that they're in Xmonad and then also the same way I have them in Qtel. They all start with super P, which is usually the default key binding in both DWM and Xmonad for a prompt, your D menu prompt. Well, I do my DM scripts super P and then another key. So the way these key chords work is this first pair is the first chord. And then the second pair is the next chord. And you see I have a zero because by default it expects some kind of mod key. So, you know, mod key piece and then you release and then maybe mod key E. Well, I didn't want to have to do a mod key the second time. I just wanted a single character. So I just added zero there for no key. So if I do this command super P E, this is my D menu uh, conf edit script, which is a config file editing script where I can search through various important config files on the system and They'll launch here inside Emacs if I selected one. And then, of course, you can see Super P I is the screenshot utility I for image. Super P K to kill a process shows some running processes, and I can pick one to kill. Super P L is the logout screen. I also, I believe, have that binded to Super Shift Q. I scrolled down the key bindings. Did I actually rebind that? I know it's a default. No, I didn't. So Super Shift Q is quitting DWM, but I, that just quits out without any kind of prompt. And just for safety reasons, I think I'm going to redo all of the quit commands for my window managers to actually be this D menu logout screen. So you actually have to do logout and then it still asks you yes or no. And you have to scroll down to yes. That way you don't accidentally hit a key binding and quit out of your window manager, which could cause you to lose work. I've got the DM scripts, key chords, and then of course I've got all the key chords for Doom Emacs. These are the standard key chords I was already using in both Xmonad and Qtile. So these are Super E followed by a key. So Super E for Emacs. So Super E and then D for Dear Ed, the file manager. Opens Dear Ed in a new window or or Super E B for buffer is the I buffers display your listing of all the buffers that are currently open in Emacs. So I was really happy to get this key chord thing working because this kind of is a deal breaker for a lot of what I do with DTOS because these window managers, Xmonad and Qtile, have key chords out of the box. You don't have to do anything. They just work. <laughs> That's really nice. DWM, I had to patch it, but the patch wasn't that hard. And some of the window managers I'm looking at in the future, many of them don't have key chords, and I don't know how I'm going to get along with that. And the reason this is important, one of the most important features for window managers, again, is it just allows you to use so many more key bindings that if you were bounded to using mod key, the super key, plus some other combination of keys, you're going to run out of key bindings very quickly, especially if you have as many key bindings as me. The other thing is, you know, I really want to use super for every key binding in my tiling window managers. I want to do super and then something else. And key chords allow me to do combinations with these super keys, right? The, and the reason it's important for me is I can't really use a lot of control key bindings or alt key bindings because control key bindings and alt key bindings conflict with your existing programs. Many of your existing programs already have built-in key bindings, especially that involve the alt key. Think about your web browser, open up Firefox or Chrome. There's a lot of stuff that if you hit alt and some key, it'll actually do something in your web browser. Obviously, I can't then rebind that to do something in my window manager because, again, you're going to mess up some of the key bindings in your programs. Control. I can't use control at all for key bindings because control is really kind of the mod key for Emacs. So many bindings in Emacs involve the control key. So I'm not going to bind anything to control. It just doesn't make sense. It just would cause me so many problems. That's why this key chord patch was such a big deal. I'm so glad I found this for DWM. Scrolling down some of the other stuff I have, of course, Super B again launches Cute Browser. I had uh, Super Alt S runs the surf command in a tabbed layout. Let me see if this actually works. I don't know. I haven't launched surf in a while. So there is surf and it's actually 
Let me get that out of the tiling layout, make that floating. This is surf. And again, I, I launched it inside tabbed. Tabbed is another suckless program, I believe. I believe if I do alt control at the same time, it'll show me the tabs. So there's only one tab. If I release it, you know, the tabs go away. I kind of patched tab to actually do that for me. So that is a really neat, I, I was kind of designing this. I wanted this to be a little different than DTOS Xmonad and DTOS Qtel because I know a lot of people that want to experiment with DWM, they want to go full suckless. So even though Alacrity is the default terminal and all the other window managers I'm going to package up, I'm going to have a build of ST just for this. Same thing, D menu. you're probably going to want to use D-Menu, not Rofi, right? You want all the suckless tools. I want to make sure that you can use the Surf browser if you want to, and that you can use Tabbed, and that Tabbed is already kind of built into Surf, so you can have tabs in your browser, kind of important, and tabs in ST, because ST doesn't support tabs, but you can run ST inside of tabs. So I really am kind of thinking of really making this a full suckless experience if you want it. Of course, many people are not going to want it. <laughs> In my personal machines, I'm probably going to swap out ST for Alacrity because I prefer that. Obviously, surf, the Surf browser has problems, <laughs> right? I'm not, the Surf browser is not a great experience. I'd probably swap out that for something better. That's why I have the Cute browser binding here as well. Also, no, because I just packaged this up for DTOS. I have not packaged up Tabbed or Surf or any of this stuff for DTOS. So do know if you go and grab this config right now, many of these bindings are not going to work because these programs are not going to be installed out of the box. Now, one thing I was experimenting with was a system tray. There are sys tray patches for DWM. They're all buggy as hell. The one that everybody uses is a massive diff, meaning there's a ton of code, source code, that it has to go change. And because I've already patched DWM heavily, that sys tray patch, I can't get it to work. Um, it doesn't matter the order I patch things in. I, I, I can go in and manually read the code and find the lines, but when I change all, everything and it even compiles correctly, DWM just doesn't work. It doesn't function. No key bindings work. It's like it's frozen. And I, I've done it twice now in different orders of the patching. So I can't get the sys tray patch to really work for me. But I was wondering, do I really need a sys tray? Especially for suckless people. <laughs> do suckless people actually use a sys tray? So what I was thinking is, I could. I already use Trayer with Xmonad. So it's already on DTOS. Could I have a key binding that just shows Trayer on the screen? And that's kind of what I was thinking. I bounded this to super semicolon just because it was a key binding I wasn't using. So if I do super semicolon, you will see Trayer appears here in the top center of the screen. So it's covering the bar here, but it shows the current items in my sys tray. So that, that's what I'm going to do. And I bounded to super shift semicolon, killing Trayer. You can see the command shell command kill all Trayer. So super semicolon gets me my sys tray when I need it, and super shift semicolon allows me to make it go away because you don't want it sitting there because it's just a little floating window. It's, it's not actually part of the bar, so it could get in the way of your tiling. So it's just one of those things, bring it up when you need it. Most people rarely ever even need to go into a system tray. That's why I really didn't think the sys tray patch was important enough for me to sit there and, and fight with it. And there's some other stuff here. Increase the number of masters in the master stack. Decrease the number of masters. So let me open up some windows. Obviously, the master section should only have one window. But if I do super I, I increase the number. Super I again. Now there's three in the master. Or if I do super D, we go back to just two in the master. And super D one more time. Now the master is just one window, which is really what it should be. Then I used uh, super comma and super period to switch focus between monitors for us multi-monitor users. These are the exact same key bindings I'm using in Xmonad and in Qtal. So if I go to this screen here, this triple monitor view here inside OBS, I'm going to move the cursor over here to monitor to the center monitor where I've got Emacs. You see my cursor going crazy. I'm moving it around on purpose so you can see that. Watch what happens when I do super comma. You guys probably noticed and I'm now on monitor one. You saw the top bar of monitor one change because it has focus now. If I actually had a window open, you'd actually see it. the red 
is the focus window. Well, if I do super period, I'm no longer focused on monitor one. I'm back on monitor two. You see the top bar turned red and in. And if I do super period again, I'm over here on my third monitor where I have OBS open, super comma, moves back to the second monitor, yada, yada, yada. So that's, again, really important functionality, especially for us multi-monitor users. That way we can move between all of our monitors without actually having to grab a mouse. So that's a little bit of what I've been doing here inside DWM here in the last couple of days. And I still got a lot of work. The only reason I really shared this video is because I've spent so much time really making these packages and playing with these configs. You guys wouldn't get much content if I actually didn't make uh, some of these videos as I'm going through this process of redoing everything. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have made a video in the last week, week and a half. And I know some of you guys are probably going to wonder where I've disappeared to. If I go more than two, three days without making a video, you guys sometimes get worried. For those of you that are actually using the DTOS core repository, you can now install DTOS-Xmonad to get my Xmonad config. That's always been there. Now you can also install DTOS-DWM, DTOS-Qtile, and DTOS-Awesome Window Manager. I still have work to do on those. Awesome Window Manager is actually giving me some issues with the whole keycord thing because out of the box, for whatever reason, Awesome doesn't support key cords, which is kind of strange because Awesome is so awesome. I mean, other than that one thing, I can't find an easy way to add key cords to this thing, and I really need that. So some of you Lua bros, those of you that are experts either with Awesome or experts with Lua, maybe you guys can let me know how I can get key cords inside the Awesome Window Manager. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Dustin, Gabe, James, Matt, Maxim, Michael, Mitchell, Paul, Wes, Wanya, Ball, Tommy, Allen, Armor, Dragon, Chuck, Commander, Angry, Diokai, Dylan, Marstrom, Erjan, Alexander, Peace, Arch, and Fedor, Polytech, Reality, Teats for Less, Red Prophet, Steven, Tools, Devler, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this quick look at my build of DWM would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen as well. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now. These are all my supporters over on Patreon because I don't have any corporate sponsors. It's just me and you guys, the community. If you like my work, want more videos on Linux, free and open source software, tiling window managers, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace. This thing is supposed to be suckless. <laughs> That's a misnomer if I ever heard one.